That movie rules. I can't wait to watch that again. It's on HBO. It is? Yeah. Nice. I'll watch it some other time. Brunch! <laughs> Hit it, boys! It's the most important question of 2019. It's all anybody wants to know. And we, Brunch, I'm Pete, that's Dave, are here to ask you where y'all sitting. sitting. Where, where y'all sitting, everybody? Yeah, where you're sitting. Let us know. Where y'all sitting? Tweet in to the show. You can call in. Give us a buzz. <laughs> Send us a... Uh, here on the morning buzz. Hit us up on the text line. Do On the text line. We're, we'd like to know where y'all sitting. Is everybody sitting somewhere? You can also let us know how how you're feeling and where you're sitting uh, on social media. You can Facebook, do, Twitter, hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Tumblr, Tumblr. No sex gifts. We though. do have a Tumblr for where you're sitting. So next Pornhub, time, where y'all sitting? Next time you're taking a walk around and you're thinking. The the this foot this is the moving feet thing. It's worn out. It's welcome. Take a deep thought and think, man. Where y'all where sitting? where I'm sitting? <laughs> where and I'm try sitting? to figure out where you're sitting. And as soon as you know where y'all sitting, y'all let us know where y'all sitting. This is a where y'all sitting episode of brunch. We want to know basically where, where you're sitting. sitting. <laughs> Pete, right now, that's me. Pete is sitting in a chair across. I, I call it from more Deej. of a stool. It's a stool. It's got a curvy back thing. I'm I'm glad that you brought up the specifics of of the sit sit. where <laughs> Dave, because I've got some questions about where y'all sit. And Deej, if you're cool with it, I'm gonna bounce a few off you, and you could tell me where y'all sitting, and I'll tell you in return. How where I think I might sit in such a situation? Yes, absolutely. But I'm glad that you brought up that I, Dave, brought up a good point. Is that we want details about the sit? You did bring up a good point. That was good on me. That's a good co-host, bro. That is a good. That's a good give and take that we're doing there, Mister Bean. That's that's synergy. Synergy. This show has reached a critical synergy. Where Peak Deej is, is, feel, is feeding off Dave, Dave's feeding off We're getting Pete. ROI. We're getting return on investment. But radio also, on the we've got the radio on the internet right now. And mainly the topic on this radio internet show is when it's time to sit. Where where's you, it going to be? Where's your buck go? <laughs> <laughs> when it's time to sit, where the buck go for you? <laughs> okay? Where are y'all where sitting, the everybody? Buck go? Where the buck go for you when you sit? We need, we should get an emergency guest right now, DJ, and be like, "Hey, Chris Watoski, thanks for joining us again." Where the buck I know go? that we opened it, uh, we opened up the last interview with a bit of a weird one, but when you sit, say it, audience. Where the buck go? Where the buck go, Chris? <laughs> Where the buck go? Oh man! Okay, you want to get through some of these. The butt where, stops here. Should the the butts? Yeah, the butt stops here, which is the surface on which you're sitting. Yes. So should we run through some of these? Where y'all sitting? Rattle them off, Pete. Okay. Where y'all sitting? In a locked theater that's about to show Bohemian Rhapsody, Ooh. or at an important lunch with people you need to impress, but the only thing they all want to talk about is how much they liked. Bohemian Rhapsody. Dave, where the buck go? Uh, for sure the lunch, because you can counter a Bohemian Rhapsody discussion and pre- present uh, a strong, strong, smart arguments against the movie, but there's no arguing against seeing the movie. That's you have true. to see the movie. Hey, young listeners, even old listeners, you're getting a new degree, you're getting into a new line of work, that's an important thing that DJ just imparted on you. If you're trying to impress people, you don't have to just yes them to death. Right. If you've got something to bring to the table, if you can be, further be smart. the conversation, if you can say, however, don't mansplain to them. Perhaps. Don't man to them. Perhaps is a good word. Your point is taken. <laughs> however, so-and-so wrote in whatever that I read online 
that this, and then you're presenting that you're well read, that you're thinking for yourself, and unlike the other people at the table ordering the Diet Coke, you're getting a Sam. You remember Ooh, that commercial? Yep, yep. And and uh, the guy next to you will also say, "I'll also well, have yeah, a Sam." I'll also have a Sam. And then the third guy's like, "Let's get drunk." And they're <laughs> like, "All right, this is a lunch meeting, okay? You are no longer sitting here. Take the butt." Put it in the cab. Ooh, Tell them to go. Don't roasted. put it on the company card because you don't work for the company yet because you're trying to impress us. I would – I don't know what I would do. I think that you talked me into the the power move play. You know, you, you, you go – Be the smartest guy in the room, not the only guy in the theater watching a shitty movie. Exactly. If you are watching Bohemian Rhapsody, especially if you've seen it, both of us have. Definitely not to brag. <laughs> The t- well, that's like doing. We're doing like a little depression brag yes, there. Yeah. We're like, dude, the, 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 like we've been through some shit. We've seen Bohemian Rhapsody. Is the uh, hey, everybody? I'm just not having a good day. Tweet. <laughs> it's letting I- everybody know, <laughs> yo, life ain't perfect. And you know who's you know who's been through some of the the, the not so good stuff. Us. Also, in one of those situations, you're probably getting free lunch, and it's not Bohemian Rhapsody. That's true. Mm. Man, what that's where to bucko. Nothing tastes as good as free tastes, or like nothing. I feel like one of nothing those, tastes better than free. Something like that. Sure. I don't know. I, I've paid for some really good food, and that Same. stuff was better than some free shit. Yeah. A lot of time when you're getting true. free food, it's uh, it's little rolls with like ham and Swiss cheese <laughs> yeah. jammed into them. <laughs> Uh, in on a like, big circle, on like week old lettuce, and, right? In a, in a big circle, and then there is like a a super shallow but long bowl of mustard. You know that thing? <laughs> it's called a boat. Who decided that? Who decided that shape for? Why don't they just make it like a just like a cup of mustard, and you can dip the straw into it? Anyway, our butts are our butts are going where they shouldn't be going. Uh, hey, where are y'all sitting? The temple in Midsomar. Or Jack Welker's clubhouse in the Breaking Bad finale. Oh, uh, Jack Welker's clubhouse in the Breaking Bad finale because there's just no way that you're surviving in the temple. I am going. Well, you, you, nobody survived in Jack's clubhouse unless it's unless Jesse. Jesse. Jesse wasn't sitting, bro. He was Ooh. brought in. And then he was tackled and held down by Walter White. If you guys haven't seen Breaking Bad yet. That is not a spoiler. Everybody knows that happens. That 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 they show that very early in the series. Yes, definitely not in the finale. No. Uh, yeah, no. I I, uh, I don't know. There's just there's no way that I, I'd rather get shot to death and uh, maybe unexpectedly than than burned to death in a temple. So here's my counter argument, and this is why I think I'm going the temple in Midsommar. A, there's a good chance there's a. There's a, I can do this math. There's a six and nine chance. Ooh, nice. That's a one. That's a two and three. It's, it's is that right? Nice percentage. Is that right? Yeah. Six and nine is two and three. Yeah. There's a two thirds chance. You already dead. You ain't Ooh. feeling anything because they already gave it to you. Now you may have had a bit of a seizure in the process. <laughs> Shouts out, Josh. Hmm. Shouts out William Jackson Harper. Yeah, I think it, I, I don't know their names. Shouts out Cheaty. Yeah, I know Cheaty. I don't know his. I think that's his real name. I don't know his name in the movie. Is it Josh? I started following him on Instagram. Good looking guy, especially when he has a mustache. Mm. That guy with a mustache looks great. Also, he's like forty years old. Is he? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Somewhere he's around there, he's, on, he's still way finished older. His thesis? Yes. Well, I don't think he's ever going to get to it now. Maybe not. Spoiler alert. Uh, I am going with the Midsomar one because a there's a chance that you're not going to feel it because you're already dead. And like, did uh, did Christian even feel it? Do we know? I don't think so. He was he, quite nonchalant. He was very on drugs. Yeah. Um, but he does scream. I think. No, what's his face screams? Uh, Pele's buddy. Hmm. Okay. Because they, they said you can't talk and you can't. Uh, they said you can't talk and you can't move. And he's just looking around. But even as like the fire hits him, there isn't much of like a. Right. It's just like very calm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I I'm still gonna go with like the very small percentage that I don't die. 
so instead, they just find you at a super racist guy's <laughs> clubhouse, <laughs> and Lucy, you got some splaining to do. That's why I'm going Midsommar, ultimately, because if they find a bunch of the bodies there, they're like, yo, all of these people were bad, and you're all implicated in a whole lot of awful shit. That's also, guilty by association, bro. Also, uh, there's a good chance if you are in the Midsommar temple that you're, you've got a cool costume. Got you? You're in a bear. You're in a bear. Way better fits than, in the Midsommar than temple the Nazis. than Nazis. Uh, I don't know how I would feel. I wouldn't want to be uh, Mark. Who, oh, Mark is the uh, the blood eagle? A, they, no, they make him a clown. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, the blood eagle thing still it's pretty messes gross. with me. Pretty gross. Like, for, for, the, for all of the, we are giving our life and we're sacro, we are choosing to return our life and everything. He's like, yo, you tortured that guy. <laughs> Like you tortured that guy. Somebody responded. In ways none of us knew existed. Right, and so and somebody responded, and then like gave it a sweet ass name. That's like another level of torture. What? Just to call something like a, a cool ass name? Well, like, uh, the Blood Eagle. Yeah, I. So I didn't. Did, did you know that term before? No, I did not know Blood Eagle before I saw that movie, and I did not know. Uh, is it bronze? Bronze bull? I didn't know that before. What's one of that? the saws, which is they make a bull out of bronze. Put a person inside, strike that match, toss it in, and you just cook in it. Oh, that sounds bad. Right. So those are two things. That, <laughs> and I always learn these things when I'm Wikipediaing a movie and it says uh, he walks in and finds Simon uh, strung up over chicken as a blood eagle. And then the blood eagle is hyperlinked and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> then you've got a real conundrum on your hands. Same with like Ates Tupan. <laughs> I had to click on that before I saw the movie. And it was like, no. Nope. What's that one? Don't like this. That's the, uh, that's the, I forget what the term is for ritualistic suicide. Oh, but okay. it's like uh, something. But okay. it, we, we all know what it was. Yeah. I, did I tell you the, the third time I went into Midsommar, the guy was like, just so you know, you're in for a crazy one, bro. And you're like, yeah, I know. It's my third time. I was like, yeah, I've seen it one and a half times. And he was like, you've already seen it? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, how many times you got to watch those old people jump? <laughs> That's awesome. It was awesome. Did you return it with like a, how many times are you going to stop? I, just, I was like, it's an attest on, dude. They happen. <laughs> and... He laughed in a, like, like, this guy is either just, like, a, a jokester. Maybe he's a bit, maybe we've got a bit of a mark on our hands. Let's let's see. If he takes a right into the bathroom, then he's fine. But if he goes and he pisses on a tree, then we know this guy is a clown. Or he's just, like, he likes seeing movies. He should have really been, like, hey, man, that's my culture. Ooh. That would have been a real, real uh, pretzel that you put him in. I should have been, like, huh. Interesting that uh, you said that. Kind of disrespectful. Hey, uh, do you want to go like visit my <laughs> homeland for the summer? It's good. Well, they they told him what did they say? They said they were going for six weeks. Yeah, and they knocked all that out in like four days, right? I would imagine so. There's no way that they that said it was a nine day weeks. festival, but I think that they they all slept like twice. Yeah. Max. Yeah, I think that they burned through their uh, their contestants a little quicker than they expected. Yeah, they were like, "Wow!" They're like, "Wow, this Mark, Mark guy's a <laughs> fucking idiot." <laughs> right, <they're> like, ah, <laughs> you, Pele, you Pele, really you undersold us, this yes, guy. Right. You told us you had a bit of a dummy. <laughs> the way you worded it was could be a good could, could there there could be potential there. <laughs> For the, yeah, the this clown. guy died before he even took off his shoes, and this guy immediately was calling us Waco and pissing <laughs> on trees. Also, we had to kill him. I don't think so I quickly. ever brought it up during the review thing, but like the fact that he called it Waco when he walked in, like kind of. I I know that's like a probably like a wink wink to the viewer, but like sure. When you realize that like you're basically walking into a cult the second that you walk into the to a cult. Like, the very second that anything comes off as a cult, you're probably getting out of it. You see all those white robes, you're like, Ugh. Like, yeah. when the guy's like, oh, my frock is a little girly, huh? I'd be like, no, your frock is a little cultish. <laughs> yeah. And you have a bear locked up over there. And best case scenario, I imagine, is, like, you let the bear out and it chases us. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Worst case scenario. Nobody I asked any questions imagine. about the Christian, bear. You're about to find out. There was like one they question do. about the bear, yes, and they, they were like, "You'll find out later." Yeah, and that was it. Simon says, uh, "Are we just going to ignore the bear?" And uh, Ingmar says, "It's a bear." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, don't worry, it's not for you. It's not. For, it's it's fine. <laughs> you're 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 not going in there. Pay no to, attention to the bear in the corner. You're about to be a real crybaby tomorrow morning, so you're not gonna last to see the bear, my friend. Okay, uh, where are y'all sitting? Behind a person leaning back on a plane, or next to a person who asks you to get up twice on a plane? Uh next to a person that asked me to get up twice on a plane. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, sit, the the lean back in front is makes you uncomfortable the entire way through. Sure. Uh, and getting up twice only inconveniences you twice. Plus, the worst part about somebody leaning back on you uh, in front is the TV that oh, is on yeah. the back of their seat where it's angled down. You're like, what the fuck? What the fuck, man? Also, you should just never lean back in a plane. Totally. I will go for whichever answer has fewer people leaning back on planes. <laughs> yeah. I under I've softened on this stance over the years. I've met and spoken to tall people who are like, you do not understand. Like, flying on a plane is the most uncomfortable part of my life. So I'm Couldn't like, be okay. Me. I get right. It, it, it doesn't apply to us. So it, it, we do need to, to hear their, their perspective. But all the, sh- the, the chaos that's created by one person leaning back on the plane, because then you got those people who are like in the middle and indifferent, and they're like, I wouldn't lean back on a plane. But if the person's leaning back in front of me, then if, then I'll just get that space back by leaning back. And then it's a domino effect, and it's chaos. And no matter what, I am not leaning back. I don't care if I'm left with no space. I am looking out for the person behind me. I'm a bit of a hero. I don't know, they've been calling <laughs> Thank me. Thank you for your service. They, I'm Pete, but if my name were Dave, they they call me Brave Dave sometimes because I, I do some some really good things for a, everybody. A humanitarian, I'm not if you back. will. I, I, I'm not leaning back. So I will you know what? I would take somebody asking me to get up five times. What about what about uh person leaning back or uh next to a person who leaves the shade up while you're trying to sleep? Ooh, that's annoying too. Yeah. Uh, I would still l- leave it up. I'll, okay, and th- that inconveniences a bunch of people too. Oh yeah, but I just I'm just so against the leaning back thing. I was gonna put this in as an option: uh, person leaning back or someone next to you who wants to talk to you. Yeah, not it couldn't couldn't be me. Uh, I would still say the person who wants to talk to you because I'll just leave my headphones in. It's it's very easy to send that <laughs> yeah. signal back that hey, I don't want to talk to you. I've had some moments on uh, Southwest flights where people it just it just creates such a social vibe, and that can be good or bad. Like if you see somebody interesting that you want to talk to, then cool. One time I was next to a couple from Texas, and they were the best, and we legitimately spent the whole flight just talking. I liked that I was next to them. But sometimes people will just be like, oh, is that seat taken? You're like, nope, it's all yours. They're like, oh, no, we're talking now. <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, just answered your question. Uh, yeah, you, you can get over that by putting headphones in. Uh, where are y'all sitting? A chair with a really short back or a chair with really short arms? Both of those are awkward <sighs> as hell. Really short arms. I don't think I've ever run into that problem because I also have really short arms. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to go with uh, really short arms because uh, I have back issues. My Same. back is junk. I need a, I need a bit of a, a of, of something. I need a, um, I need my back. butt needs a baby got back. Over the weekend, chair with back. Over the weekend, one of my friends was like, she was walking behind me and she was like, "Yo, your back is round as hell right now," <laughs> and I was like. Oh, you know why it is right now? Because it always is. Because I have the worst posture in the world. Absolutely. Do you? You have posture issues? Uh, oh yeah, the worst. I have like undiagnosed. Like I don't. I never talked to a doctor about. I had scoliosis as a as a kid. I think that we've had this discussion on the podcast before, where you found out that scoliosis was a real thing and not something that they just like made up in middle school. I do remember they talked an awful lot about scoliosis, <laughs> and no one had it. They would bring well, us in like. 10 times a year to test for scoliosis. And I'm like, let me guess. I don't have scoliosis. You don't have scoliosis. Whoa! <laughs> well, guess who did? This guy. I would, if there were 
I don't know. What, what do you do for a back other than a some, brace? Then like a brace and hu- like, is there not an an, an Invisalign I don't type think so. solution? No, I don't think so. I think that you kind of just have to deal with it, man. And then when, whenever I stand that seems up, wrong, but I'm just going to go for straight, it because that's what I'm doing. Whenever I stand up straight, it looks like I'm doing something. Yeah, it feels like I'm trying. Right. Like I'm. I like, never yeah, want the appearance. Hey, that I'm why trying. are you walking around? Like that. That's not how you walk around. You're supposed to be hunched over. Also, I'm like, I'll try. I'll try this for like. I'll try this for like as long as I can, and then 30 seconds later, I just forget about it and go back to normal posture. Uh, yeah, I, I know that the parts aren't in the, in this area of the body, but I feel like I'm like presenting when I'm <laughs> walking around with good posture. Hey, baby, you like what you see? Like, why are my like are my arms supposed to be this far back behind <laughs> the rest of my body? I don't think so. It just it doesn't look right. When you sit, when oh, I'm when, just like, when you're when you're sitting, do you, does it sometimes like part of your back is on like the seat? <laughs> I don't think so. I think I, I do don't that. think my back has ever like fallen out of my ass. No, I'm saying like you're like like I'm gonna move the mic. Like like if you're on a couch like this, sometimes I I think I do this a lot. Oh, I get what you're saying there. Where there's like a little bit of there's like a little bit of space. There's space, yeah. right? There's like you could draw a little triangle yeah. in between the halfway through your back, uh, your butt, and the corner of the chair. Yeah, I, I think that happens sometimes. That's got to be just so bad for you. Oh yeah, and I, oh, like, I mean all of it's very. bad. I feel like once you do that once, like you're just gonna do that forever. I also am very bad at sitting all the way back in a chair, like so that like my back is fully pressed up against the back of Definitely. the chair. Definitely, I sit at the front. I used to do that consciously in the car. I used to sit car. I still kind of do my car seat. I do straight up, so I'm okay. mostly back against the chair. But then I end up leaning forward and just like vibing out. So it's it's tough. Uh, last one. Where are y'all sitting? An inflatable chair that keeps deflating while you're trying to take a nap. <laughs> We've all been there, ladies. <laughs> or next to an old person at the movies. Oh, I'll take anything other than a next to an old person at the movies. I was really trying to think of a like a needling, annoying thing that could be as bad as the next to an old person at the movies. But even as I was reading that, I was like, oh, there is no shot. At least that chair is not going to eat like a tuna fish sandwich next to you at the movies. Between the stuff they bring, the sounds <laughs> they make, the... The audacity that they show just to disrespect the entire rule. Like, for uh, for how how many <laughs> times old people are like, like that sound is back in lot. my day, we had manners and blah, blah, blah. The kids these days yes. are so rude. And then they walk into a movie theater and they throw all that shit out the window that and they're like, we get to be point. the rude person. That is such a good point. They are so... Like, we know that they're very disrespectful at, at movie theaters, but I never considered that. That generally, when people are calling other people rude, it's old people saying that they used to be so well-behaved and they had all this structure and they walk into a movie theater. Like, I could have 10 cell phones out, waving them, yelling, (laughs) help, help, over here. Like, like, I I don't know, like it's in the movie Crawl and I'm trying to get a... a, uh, uh, a helicopter's attention, and I would be making less somebody, noise. Somebody else in that distra- theater would be like, "Fuck that old guy!" Right, and that guy with the phones, not that bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I don't. It makes me wonder, like, what movie theaters back in the day used to be like. Were they were they just fucking like raves? Was that the norm? <laughs> just like a fucking party in a theater where it's super loud, and they just got used to that shit and brought it uh, uh, to to modern day. I don't know. I, th- there's no way they could have been that disrespectful in the movie because they didn't they used, they used to have shushing at the movies because we don't have shushing now nobody shushes anybody well, you everyone's know, afraid know of why. confrontation yeah and just getting killed right so uh, yeah I, I don't know but I would rather do anything but sit next to an old person at the movies well that sums up our uh, <laughs> where are y'all sitting talk we're gonna use that as a segue into the whole where are y'all sitting thing like what you like. The, the memes are fun and everything. This one came out, and both of us were like, yo, this one is like especially stupid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I uh, There was not one second of this meme that I was like, hey, maybe I'll get on board with this. Just seems just seems like the worst meme in, in a long time. W- primarily because it's work. 
That oh, meme yeah. is work. It is it is exhausting. It's taxing. There's a lot of stuff to read. There's like they're trying to make you make a decision. I don't want to yeah. make decisions in a meme. Yeah. I just want to fucking look at something dumb as hell and laugh. I want to wait for the part where oh it turns into this. Like the, yeah. the like the the tingo skr- <laughs> All those memes were great because you knew there's a payoff. I'm looking at something else for a half a second until I hear the ting goes and then you laugh because our brains are very dumb and we just want to hear what we want to hear and that's it. This stunk. Yep. Uh, we do have a mock one out there if you uh, want to check it out. It's basically the there's one table which really takes up like eight tables and it's just everything we've ever discussed on brunch at one table or the Zac Efron bag is at the other table. Someone responded and said that yeah, apparently you can't get yeah. the Zac Efron bag in that color anymore. Shouts to me for you got it. it then. Uh, Collector's item. So they were saying they would definitely take that. Uh, I'm a little bummed. Let me check the replies. There was a bit of an Easter egg in there. I don't know if people either didn't notice it or they were like, this is so obvious. that." Did I not notice it? Let's, uh, let me see. Oh, someone did respond. That they noted that uh, Lily James and Father John Misty are next to each other. The th- oh yeah, the, no. But the thing that I put out there was, uh, or that that I included in it was, uh, there's Father John Misty's there twice. Oh really? I didn't yeah. even notice that. Yeah, take a look at it. Spot it. See if yeah. you can. There's there's one of him on late night with Seth Meyers, and there's one of him wearing the uh, the rose colored glasses that he wore know, for I like a year. Oh okay. Damn, I, I just feel like I, I like don't even notice him when he's just there, like without the glasses. I feel like the glasses is just his look, the tinted glasses. That that is such a good look. Yeah, that was so. I, I feel like he maybe has something every album. The uh, his look for pure comedy was the mustache that uh, was not well received. He and then for God's favorite customer, he had those uh, tinted glasses, which were awesome. Uh, of another fun little mini meme. You want to jump in on that? Uh, Randy asking us for more Midsommar episodes. <laughs> yeah. Somebody responded uh, with a thing of Tyrone Biggums yeah. uh, saying, y'all got any more of those Midsommar episodes? I don't think that Randy asked for Midsommar episodes. I think he just asked for episodes in general because uh, we took a week off because we just couldn't make it work. Yeah. First time that we take taken a like bye week did. in a long time. No, he did. He did. He I I posted a Midsummer meme. It was uh, Father John. It was Father John Misty, clearly in the pure comedy uh, era because he had a mustache with uh, flowers in his hair, holding a pot of flowers, and said Midsummer 2019. And he said, "Y'all got any more of them episodes?" Speaking of which, uh, we're gonna make a Midsummer themed shirt. So oh, yeah. uh, get ready. I don't know. We'll we'll have it up in uh, a few days, I'm sure. But get ready. Hopefully by Friday. I like, yeah, I hope so, and and I like the idea of it being part of like another of like a overarching scheme of shirts that we have. How so? I told you this that like w- once the Oscars roll around and stuff, and once the, we have we pick our movies that we want and that we're rooting for, make some shirts for so them like and, a and theme the brunch shirt style. for each movie. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, I, li- I the reason I'm more partial for now to the Midsummer thing is because like we've harped on. Midsummer, and it's like right up our alley with with all like the f- the floral and things like that. It's gonna be a good looking shirt, folks. Hell yeah, you're gonna want it. You know what else you're gonna want? What's that? Life insurance, because life insurance is important because we're all gonna die someday. Not to be uh, not to be dark, but not to be too positive. <laughs> we're we're, get, we're we getting we all get there, to. Man. Shouts out Midsummer. We give uh, our lives. A lot of these days, workplaces offer some nice perks like snack stations, flavors of soda water, sometimes insurance. And sometimes it's nice to have those perks, but a lot of the times, the insurance just isn't good enough. So if you want a better type of insurance, you can go to Policy Genius because Policy Genius is the easy way to shop for life insurance online. In minutes, you can compare quotes from top insurers to find the right, right amount of coverage at the best possible price. Policy Genius can look at your workplace life insurance and help you decide what you might need, what you don't, the better sort of option for you. So it lays it out all right in front of you. And Policy Genius doesn't just make life insurance easy. They can also help you find the right home insurance, auto insurance, and disability insurance. Uh, I've used Policy Genius. It's super easy to use. So uh, I give it the thumbs up there. 
And remember, if your workplace life insurance policies are lacking and they're just like the snacks, better than nothing but not quite good enough, head to policygenius.com today and find out how to supplement your workplace life insurance and find a better product uh, for your family. And uh, Policy Genius, it's like a buffet made of life insurance. (laughs) What could be more delicious than that? Oh, good, cool stuff. $500. Yes. Policy genius. Yes. <laughs> Policy genius. Want five hundred bucks? You you tell me. Uh, <laughs> New Heim. New Heim. New Heim. Heim is out. Heim put out a song. It's called Summer Girl. It is exactly Walk on the Wild Side by Lou Reed, and it's a lovely, fun summer song. What do you think? Eh, not for me. Not for you. Yeah. It did nothing for me. Do you like Walk on the Wild Side? I don't know if I've ever heard it, but okay. I feel like I have now. All right, Rob, well, yeah, you, you've, you've heard now. It's, a, uh, it's different than a lot of Heim songs. Yeah. It's very breezy and light. There's some saxophone in it. Uh, it's definitely, definitely different than any other. It, it doesn't have like a cool beat or anything. It's too subdued. It's, it's quite, quite laid back. It's, I think it's supposed to be kind of like a breezy, easy song. Which, by the way, I'm fine with, but don't make it like your first single, first song in like the last two years. Yeah, I never understand what they're doing with that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm also confused by that. When you've been off for 44 years, Haim, we, we need you to come out with you like not Forever Taylor Part Swift. 2. You have to knock out of the park when you're returning, please. And like, you're capable of only making good songs, right. so just, just make them all jam skis. I feel like that would be the, the way to do it, but late summer... I I think this this is a song that's like on all my playlists right now. It does fit the the vibe of late summer, but it's different than what they usually do. It is uh, the most derivative song they've ever done because it is "Walk on the Wild Side" by Lou Reed. But I'm okay with it because a like. Heim does derivative stuff, and they make no lie about it. It's kind of the Bruno Mars rule. Like yeah. they're not pretending that they're like, "Hey, we came up with this. Uh, we came up with this sound, and we came up with this." Like Danielle posted when they put it out, she was like, "I'm excited to share this song tomorrow." Uh, we basically we want it to sound just like "Walk on the Wild Side." Love Lou Reed. Here you go, and that's exactly what it is. And again, I think it's it's kind of cool because we've talked about it before, but like Heim are like music people they right. are just obsessed with music i've said it before like i just i can't imagine any day that they go through without listening or playing to music it's just like who who they are they're obsessed with fucking music so when they do that stuff it's it, it does seem like it's like a tribute to that completely, sort of music completely rather uh, than a ripoff and then you're right then some some other people kind of uh try to pull fast ones and i'll say a lot of people these days really since Heim's come out, have been like going for that Heim sound. Like They're trying to sound like Heim. So I think that Heim's allowed to rip people off when, like, God bless this girl, but like we're, we're, are we acting like Maggie Rogers is doing her own thing? All right. Like, folks, folks, we acting like Maggie Rogers is like super original. Love her. Love her work with, with Ross Dam. Love all she's doing. Falling water, but she's another person. Song, but, but she's like, another person who seems like a. She's like, a like yo, music I'm cool. Person. I want to do that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, it, this song didn't really do it for me, but I'm excited that they are back and that there's more stuff coming. Mm. I hope that they don't pull the uh, little of your love move where they just like play a song for the first time and then don't release it for like three months. Yeah, that was mean. That, that was, was weird. We were, that was weird as hell. We were scratching ourselves. I don't think I've ever seen that. That was. Um, yeah, that's true. They really didn't. the The arrangement ended up changing like a little by a the time we, we bit. We found we ended up hearing it. I was like, yeah, you can't just give us a little taste. But then... but I've seen I've seen that happen where like uh, they release a, you release a song and then you tweak it before the album, right? Like or Kellen's like you're saying band... like you play it live and then no you... no not even just that like you re- you release the song in addition to playing it and then you make a change to it. On the actual think, album, Heim didn't do that though. They Heim no, just played it no. live, yeah. Right, but I'm I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Like I've s- released the song after you play it, gotcha. and then you can tweak it if you want to make any changes. Yeah, they uh, they did that with uh, Forever. They uh, I think they made Forever with uh, I don't know if you ever heard of him, uh, Ludwig Göransson. Kind Ooh, of yeah. having a moment. 
Uh, and then oh, they, yeah. and then when they put it out on the album, they were like, "Yo, Ariel, let's 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 get all the big guns in here, and uh, let's we can make it." I actually kind of like that better because then you get two versions of the same song, and you get to like decide which one you like better. Yeah, the, uh, how'd you th- like the music video? Oh, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh, did you know that? Yeah, it, that it sure did. <laughs> I am crazy about the fact that Paul Thomas Anderson's full time job now <laughs> yes. is. Making Heim music videos in which Heim walks around L.A. <laughs> yes. That's all these videos have been. I know. It's just and, them walking around L.A. But I do like that they they have one idea, and they're like, well, let's just get a guy who fucking is way above our pay grade, and he'll like just do it for us as a favor and make it look cool. And it's so funny, because what, what, how did they get to know him? They realized that their, their mom, mom t- taught him. Taught him. Like so, that's a cool little way of saying I know Paul Thomas Anderson. That generally shouldn't be like a hey, work and now, us, work for us forever. <laughs> and now this great like director who makes much better things than music videos, he belongs only to us. makes our music videos, and they're all us walking. What are the chances that Paul Thomas Anderson is just trapped in the Heim family basement? That's a good call. Like we because we, I'm pretty sure he like retired from filmmaking after. Oh no, that's no, that uh, was uh, that's uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that was King. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis. He retired from filmmaking after the uh, uh, Phantom Thread. I would retire from everything after making something that good. <laughs> I know that movie rules. I can't wait to watch that again. It's on HBO. It is. Yeah. Nice. I'll watch it some other time. <laughs> um, he. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, the, the music video is also them just uh, walking around L.A., of and course. taking their clothes off. Uh, while taking their clothes off. And that became... That's like a social media challenge now. It's like the uh, the Summer Girl Challenge. And it's like people just walking out of work being like, oh, work day's done. And they like they take off their shirt and walk out and everything. Uh, I feel like no one would want that from us. <laughs> yes. I, I, I feel like we should uh, we should do the brunch summer girl challenge in which we walk out of places and put more clothes on. We could, uh, if we had a camera set up, we could finish this episode by uh, taking our shirts off and then be like, hi, check it out. We're playing too. <laughs> Is this cool? A derivative. You put us in, uh, you put us in touch with, uh, with PTA. <laughs> Get us, uh, get us, maybe some some phantom thread swag. We should, what we should do is we should recreate, the, we should recreate the video and be like uh, before to- Paul Thomas Anderson, after Paul Thomas Anderson. And just be like, this is what this is what this guy can do. Oh, meaning like he can just make us look like Heim. Ooh, yeah. I like it. That's this is the un- cool. uncut version. Uh, speaking of music. big week for uh, brunch on the old uh, Father John Misty subreddit. <laughs> I make no lie, I don't know how to use Reddit, and I don't do Reddit. The only one I look at, really, is Father John Misty. And somebody somebody made like a very thorough uh, t- uh, Father John Misty songs in tears, and it was great. And they posted it on Twitter, and it was excellent. They tagged us in it, and that was on the uh, subreddit, and somebody commented... Brunch is the most underrated podcast. Oh, that's then, how it happened. Yeah, I didn't. I just thought that like somebody left a very random comment on the Father John Misty subreddit. No, because they they tiered it, and that, that tweet said like the only people who will appreciate this are listen or is listen to brunch, Ooh. and uh, a few people commented saying, "I love that." Yeah. So if anybody here is on the Father John Misty subreddit, yeah, I'll, I guess see you around because that's where. <laughs> That's where, that's that's where I'm sitting when I'm when I'm redditing. Uh, guess speaking of music and fans of brunch, what? guess who I ran into in Asheville, North Carolina this week? Asheville, North Carolina, whomst? Uh, the couple that we signed the Imagine Dragons album for oh, and sent cool. in the mail. Nice. Yes, it was uh, very very weird and very very weird that like it happened that we that I ran into them. Not weird to meet them because they were very cool, very nice people. How much has it appreciated? Did you ask them? Uh, yeah, like a lot. It's Hundreds? Just, it was, uh, yes. Uh, and the the girl who, it was for her birthday, she absolutely loved it. That's and great. we sent it to her like two months after her birthday. And I guess that her boyfriend didn't really get her anything other than that. Oh, so it was nice. like an awkward two-month waiting period where she was like, do I have to break oh, up with this guy? Because That's he... the classic, happy birthday, your gifts in the mail. <laughs> yes. If, if I had was. a nickel for every time I did that, I'd have enough money to actually buy a person a present. But, but, but you didn't have to rely on two idiot podcasters to send it. 
That's not true. I'm usually relying on one idiot That's podcaster true. when I'm trying to do anything, and I am holding me back. Uh, one last thing: if you're on the uh, Father John Misty, or if you're not on the Father John Misty subreddit, this is the kind of stuff you're uh, missing out on. So Father John Misty has been wearing some wonky fits of late. He uh, his luggage was lost at a recent show, so he did the show in a Nike hoodie. But generally, his look, apparently the last week or so, has been these big flowy pants and like a shitty sleeveless shirt. But not, not, like, a, not like a tank. Like, uh, would it be called a muscle tank where it's like it's cut got down a low? gap. Right, where there's a gap. And I th- God, t- he looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> he looks terrible. And he's wearing loafers. So somebody uh, eight days ago posted on the Father John Misty subreddit. Anyone else notice FJM's transition from ultra tight skinny pants to super loose pants on this tour? And uh, the comments include, yes, I did. <laughs> and summertime, giving the boys some room to breathe. But one of them, one of the comments was, are we really going to talk about this? And someone who got the most points of any response on the thing was, Dada Juan Crispy's fashion choices are a number one priority here on this subreddit. And everybody was like, yes. <laughs> also, I mean, like... We're only talking about... Like, you are on the Father John Misty subreddit, and you are arguing that, like, hey, don't we have better things to do? Right. If, if you're on the <laughs> yeah. subreddit of anything, it means that you care so <laughs> yes. much about every little thing of that. Right. It's like, hey, loser... Stop talking about Father John Misty all the time on this Father John Misty chart. People chat do board. that with like sports talk stuff where they're like, oh, well, we're not really going to talk about this, are we? And it's like, yeah, because yo, we, we, we came here to talk about sports. 24 hours to fill today. Oh, especially these days. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's, uh, that's the uh, Father John Misty subreddit section. You can go on the Father John Misty subreddit and... Uh, upvote that comment about how good brunch is maybe start a new thing saying everybody on the father john misty subreddit which there's probably like 18 of us should be listening to brunch Ooh, uh, 23 online 6.1 thousand members on the father john misty wait, there's subreddit. a way you can know yeah it says right at right at the top of the page on the on the right side community details uh 6.1 thousand members 23 online right now i feel like even if you're not even if you don't want to get into the like minutia of every little Father John Misty subreddity thing, like I, I feel like you probably don't have time for a like. Where were you the first time you heard Strange Encounter post? Like you don't care about shit like that. But I feel like you should still every now and then just stop by the Father John Misty subreddit because it's just it's like what we do. It's like we bring up the occasional. So this fucking weird thing happened involving this guy. It's a uh, post now. Someone yeah. tiered the mist man. Yeah. And uh, you can bet it was a good post. You can also bet on sports. While baseball season is in full swing, placing a wager on baseball has never been easier with all the best odds at betonline.ag. This week, I'm watching the Rays take on the Cincinnati Reds. But wait. Can you believe the NFL preseason is underway? To celebrate another season kickoff, BetOnline.ag and CLNS Media are giving you a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That could be worth $500, depending on what your first deposit is, I think. Head over to BetOnline.ag or use your mobile device to join today and use promo code CLNS50 to receive your welcome bonus. Don't sit on the sidelines this Ooh. football season. Where are y'all sitting? Hopefully not the sidelines this football season. Get into all the action with betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Please see BetOnline's general rules for additional terms and condition. A minimum deposit of $55 is required to qualify for the bonus. I got to say, are you done with that, Reed? Yeah. <clears throat> I got to say, real savvy move on your part. What? Uh, you know what you did. What did I do? You know what you did. I generally... I, I agree that I did something, but I mostly don't know what I did. Well, we have three reads today. 
There's one remaining. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that, that, I <laughs> definitely did that on purpose. There's one remaining, which means And you that, went first. Yes. So it's your turn yeah, after this one. Yes, one would assume that, that we're alternating reads on this episode. One of our reads, I think you guys should know by now, because one of us has had to do it every time and has hated it every time. One of our reads sucks. <laughs> it... Maybe the may, and, maybe definitely and, the company's good. They are so good at what they do that they don't have enough time to put together an even tolerable read. Right. So if they're using like ninety percent of their brain, like five percent of it is dedicated to, to constructing a good ad read. Uh, and I don't even know if five percent is right. <laughs> and uh, if Bet Online, if, if you are listening. Because sometimes we, it's not have, you. we have to we have to send in air checks, which yeah. is how we get in trouble. Because they listen to all these reads. Wasn't you, baby? Uh, it wasn't love you. you. We're not talking about You're you. Beautiful. We love bet online. Yeah. Uh, very easy. Makes You're my the little read, thing. <laughs> makes the read very very palatable hmm. and easy to relay. This so the easiest good, thing I've done. In my good life. for you, bet online. We love you. Guess what? Also, that we loved. What's that? Or at least that I loved. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood. Yo, I loved it too. Hell F yeah! These haters. Hell hey yeah! Y'all, if the, how y'all doing? I'm the Tucci. What is it? I don't. Hey man, fuck these haters. How y'all doing? I'm the Tucci. Yeah, I got do the da ba ba. I'm talking about Lil Tunchi. Lil Tunchi. Lil yeah, Wayne. I know him. On um, look at me now. We don't talk about that artist anymore, though. We talk about. Oh, Lil is he Wayne. canceled? Oh, okay. Chris Brown. Oh, okay, 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 okay. How are you gonna hate from? I don't know how you gonna hate from outside the club. Get in. <laughs> Let go. Yo, my old chick. Yo, model sipping. Yo, Lamborghini. Yellow top missing. What is it? What? What? That shit looked like a toupee. I get what you get in 10 years. In two days. Ah, oh, that sounds familiar. Me. I'm on my cool J. Okay, now I know if what song we're talking about. what I get, what would you say? <laughs> she wax it all off. Mr. Miyagi. And them suicide doors. I don't know the last line. I, I got you got it that line. far, and then it goes. Uh, look at me now, and then uh, then he does like a little mystical thing. He does. He goes. And then he says, "Oh, she accidentally fell on my dick." Oops, I said on my dick. I ain't really mean to say on my dick, but since we talking about my dick, all you haters say hi to it. I'm done. <laughs> and you think, all right, song's over. Then that's got to be it. Yeah. But you know what? In the title, it said featuring Lil Wayne. And Busta rhymes, then Busta comes in. He's like, hey, get back here. Okay? Hey, Classic breezy. spoiler alert. Hey, hey, hey Breezy, let me, let me show you how to keep the dice rolling when you're doing the thing there, homie. Yo, 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 yo. Let's go. Because I'm feeling like I'm running up here. Like, I got to get away. Get it. You know that song. Yeah, I know it now. Yeah. Look at me now. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Tunchi. And then you go, every time I got to go, and then I got to go, and then in the background, it's like, ooh. <laughs> Yeah, so I liked you know Once Upon one? a Time in Hollywood. I also liked Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, it should look like a toupee. Are, uh, are people saying bad things about it? People are being... Because I saw it and I immediately left. People are being fucking annoying about it. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. I mean, people are being annoying about it before it even came out. We know, we talk about the press conference, things like that. Not even, not even that. People are just... Uh, it was long. It's a Tarantino movie. Mm-hmm. It was long. It toyed with history. Oh, what? It's Quentin Tarantino messed around with, with history? Right. Uh, hello. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Welcome to Quentin Tarantino. I didn't start seeing movies until like four hours ago, <laughs> yeah. and I know that he was going to toy with history. Yeah. I don't, Damn, I don't baby. Like, this is the guy who had Hitler killed with right, like a million machine guns. Movie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I can understand complaints. Like, Tarantino's not going to be for everybody. I-, I tweeted it out right after I saw it. Like, nothing happens in the first two hours of that movie. But you know what? Super enjoyable. I enjoyed every second of it. And uh, the ending was made it w- all of that worth it. I disagree that nothing happened. I, nothing I, substantial I happened. felt like it was so... But that's... I, I thought that in the moment. And then the more I reflected on the movie... It was it was slow. It doesn't mean that nothing happened. Okay, I so think that like Sharon, Sharon Tate was the most, I'm not necessarily the most important part. I would say that it is like fifty fifty. The first say two hours of the movie. How long is it? Two twenty seven. Two yeah, it's like two thirty. So I would say the there. first hour and forty five minutes of the movie, the uh, the storyline and the importance with what eventually is going to happen is. Uh, 
is uh, Dalton, what a, Jack Dalton, and his stunt guy, stunt guy, uh, and his encounters with the Manson family, mm-hmm. and Sharon Tate just living her life, and Sharon Tate just living her life. Really, for all these things, all these things except for Brad Pitt's character were generally mundane. Like Brad Pitt's character was like running into people who yeah. you who you know are bad guys and he's getting into fights. So that is that's stimulating. Uh uh Leo's character is just crying and feeling sorry for himself. So that's kind of slow and that's boring. And but Sharon it's... Tate's character is just you're seeing very much from afar someone who we never got to know just kind of going through her day. And I understand that that's like classic nothing is happening but it was so important to just show like okay, this so person existed rather than rather than like get rather than saying nothing is happening i would say that the first two hours is just getting to know these characters yes and that is not a bad thing i thought it was very entertaining but while i was watching it the like the thought came through my mind that i was like i'm never going to need to see a lot of this stuff ever again because, yes, but that, but I, I feel like because you are getting to know that you you already know them. I would argue that you don't get to know Sharon Tate, and I think that that's by design. I think that they are just showing like this was just a person who was early on in her career, is starting to do well, and she's just kind of going through her day. And I know it sounds maddening. To then why would you like why show would you that? Watch that? Why would you keep showing that? Right. Like the her big scene is she goes and she sees herself in. A movie, it's which like she by was, the way, she was just a, a young, a young person. Which, by the way, I like that they left in like the actual Sharon Tate in the in that movie scene. I thought that was like a nice little like tribute. Oh, did they? Yeah, it was actually her. That's cool on the on the on the uh, the old screen. Right. So, but it's so it's it's tough to say that it's it's not like a slow burn where it's like working towards something. I think it's just really establishing. Hey. Sharon's not doing anything crazy here, and not that this isn't like she goes to uh, to a shoot and she gets in an argument and she goes. She was just she's just right. it's just two days. Is it two days? Something like that. Two days in the life of this person who's not huge, but she's getting there, and it's a very exciting time for her. While this other person who's never who's had success without really ever having to work is suddenly finding himself in. The 60s or the the late 60s after just being like, hey, smile and be handsome and we'll right. give you jobs. It's a bit of a career crisis. Right. They're, they're, those two, their careers are going in two different directions. And uh, really the, the, big, the big crux of this movie is that it was Brad Pitt porn. You think so? I mean, oh, God, I yeah. mean, it was, uh, it was a, lot of, like, a lot of Brad Pitt just being Brad Pitt. He was Pitt. great. See, I don't know if he was great. Because my my argument is like, when was the last time? I, I mean, I think that he he was like strong in this movie, but he was just Brad Pitt. Yes, but that, that so that brings me to the question: When was the last time Brad Pitt did anything that wasn't just like him being Brad Pitt? I hear what you're saying, but he but does like, that I mean, so I super, well. Like, I that, mean, I enjoy like a, it like when you're writing that movie and you're like, hey, best case scenario for this character, who am I getting? It's Brad Pitt, right? And you envision that because he always does that. I but I'm just saying, always like, does that. It's always somewhat close. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, it's hard for me to think. Like there are a few ones that I that I like. I know he played like an old guy. Um, he played a dumbass in uh, Burn After Reading, and he was really good in that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, uh, Seven was good. That, that was sort of like a different character. But like recently, Brad Pitt just plays Brad Pitt. It feels like, How'd you which think? I enjoy it. Yeah. I like Brad Pitt. How'd you like Leo? I thought Leo was great. Yeah. The, uh, but Leo was always great, and I thought that he was he was really, really strong in this. I mean, the trailer scene was unbelievable, where yeah. he just freaks out. Yes. Th- I- that was like that. I think that's like the other than like the end scene mm-hmm. that everything sort of like comes together. Uh, the, the trailer scene is what really stands out to me. I thought all three of them were so good. Margot Robbie, especially. Now, once you see the movie, you get some context on the uh, scorekeeping that, mm-hmm. that was going on before the movie, which, how come Margot Robbie doesn't have as many lines as Leo and Brad Pitt? Again, like, very respectfully, and this isn't to dismiss that, like, there is a, a hierarchy that exists in Hollywood and everywhere, but, like, 
she didn't have as many lines as those people because she was the third lead and those people like the, those and like, also guess what she was alone for a lot of the movie and that's the thing so you see it and you're like okay i understand why someone would say would notice she doesn't have a lot of lines but you want but at least i did i understood when watching the movie they were it was all just like showing her going through her day she's not talking to a lot of people it's just Really, just like a lot of like, look at this 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 beautiful young actress who is I've said this a million times now, but like on her way and she's really working her way up and people seem to like her and uh, obviously if you know the the the, the Manson family story um, that she was destined for better than what ended up happening. So a lot of it was almost like Five Hundred Days of Summer. You know how they just like had those shots in the beginning of of summer before yeah. before we really got to know her character of just like this is this lovely person with face, like this yeah. grace around she them. averages is averages like 2.5 double, double takes right. on the bus per morning or something right so th- that's kind of what that character was and i kind of liked that we didn't get that like they didn't force in this uh and i know quentin tarantino changes history all the time but i'm glad that he didn't like force in this hey she did this and she did that and like kind of making up stuff that maybe wasn't true to Sharon Tate right. Sharon Tate to all of us is kind of this like this what could have been yeah you know? I, I get exactly what you're saying and I, I hadn't thought about it in that that's a good point like if you come away from this movie and be like I wish that we got more Margot Robbie I wish there was like we understood her more in this movie maybe that's the fucking point point. and spoiler alert we do end up getting more Right. That's a... I guess that's a... No, nah, maybe you don't know what that spoiler alert means. But we do end up getting uh, more more Sharon than maybe Expected. you might expect based uh, on history. Uh, you got to shout out... Do, do you want to talk about the feet thing? I don't care. Everyone was getting mad at uh, Quentin Tarantino that they show a lot of feet in this movie. Oh, I didn't even notice. All right, I've, I've now got. Oh, I did s- notice the uh, like on the on the dashboards. There's that was the only on the time dashboard. I noticed it, but people were like, "Man, Quentin Tarantino just can't make a movie without showing a bunch of feet." All right, I don't care. Um, <laughs> I. Uh, it was a lot. I'll tell you, it was a lot, uh, a lot less upfront than uh, Welcome to Marwin. Oh right, right. That was a, like basically a foot fetish movie. Yeah. Okay. So. I've maybe come around a little bit on that. I used to think, because like, I people have foot f- feet fetish. That, that, that's a that's a common fetish that people have. Right. And I used to, and I'll admit, I still do think it's really weird. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. I don't understand how people are like really into feet. Feet are weird looking things. I think that they're much better parts of a human inside and out. Like. How you could be more drawn to someone's feet than if like they make you feel good about yourself or if you enjoy their company, whatever. But recently, like I've just come to find or I've I've come to understand it is something that, that people have. And as long as they're not as long as they're like respectful and not well, that, so that's crazy thing. about it. That's the thing. Like I, I, I like what you like, whatever, like being a foot fetish person doesn't make you a bad person or like a, a real creep or anything. Like people are into what they're into. I'm, I'm not into kink shaming. Right. I just think that there's like a time and place for being like, this is what I'm into. And there's nobody on the face of the earth that is more upfront more and, less, vocal and, and, yes. and uh, less shameless than or more shameless than foot fetish people right. who are just like, this is I am in defeat. And it's like. Okay, like fine. Don't make me feel uncomfortable because you are in defeat. Right. Yeah. I mean, and I not. I don't want this to be like the two non-foot guys give advice <laughs> yeah. to foot fetish people. But, but like, I feel like, but like, like but I wouldn't dare like go up to you and be like, "This is what I'm into," and like that would like d- doesn't matter what it is. So let's take Rex Ryan for example. I think unless unless there's more to it that we don't know, I think that the Rex Ryan thing was like fine like yeah. he and his wife like she knows that he's into to feet and they sometimes they made videos do, for themselves right, and, and they like made videos people for- found them and then there was a lot of kink shaming like i think if that happened now there would be like a lot of response that would be like people like don't kink shame right and like they were trying to keep i i guess they did a bad job of keeping it to themselves <laughs> but like they weren't in everybody's face mm-hmm. and since then rex ryan still hasn't been in any everybody's face about it right he's pretty reserved he but he likes what he likes and good for him 
But like, there are so many feet people that are just right in your face about it. Legitimately, every every girl I know with any bit of notoriety and oh, yeah. in this business, like we we know a few, they've all gotten emails, uh, social media messages, whatever, of people saying like, "Hey." I'm I'm trying to be respectful and polite here. Could you please show me pictures of your feet? You're not being respectful and polite. <laughs> right. That you are immediately putting someone you don't know in a super uncomfortable position. So we both understand why those people get such a bad rap. But again, it's it's like the it's the don't throw the baby out with the bath water thing. I right. think that people I think that it's that it's very weird, but as long as you're respectful, live and let live. I, I wouldn't guess. say that I think it's. I guess I wouldn't say that I think that it's super weird. I just would say that. Well, just like personally, like it's it's not it's my different thing. to me. Yeah, it's, yeah, I don't get it. I yeah. right. So I maybe, don't get it. Maybe but very like, weird is is a little right. insulting, but it's it's similarly if it's like uh, we we all get on like the like the Florida man thing. It's like Florida man does this, and you're like, ha! If you're a man from Florida, it means that you eat people. It's like okay, <laughs> no, no, they're saying a man in Florida, a just. We 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 overgeneralize yeah. a bit in but, uh, in our old age. But I would say that like I didn't notice that the the uh, the Tarantino thing. I didn't notice the feet thing in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood more than like like I didn't come away from it being like whoa he was really. I didn't either. Movie. A lot of people were. I did see a lot of that. Well, now that now that it's been said, now I'm gonna next time I see it, I'm gonna look out for it, and I'm gonna. Have to and now like, you're oh, a, foot a fucking person. foot. And now it's and a fucking that, foot movie. That's <laughs> how you become a foot person. Uh, the other big observation, uh, and I'm going to have to get up from my seat, climb to the top of a mountain, and say, Maya Hawk. Oh Folks, yeah, we stand. Oh yeah, Queen. Queen, she is going to take over the damn world. She is, she for sure is, and like it's it's fun to see it happen. And like the, f- I don't know what she did before Stranger Things, but I'm assuming that she was in some stuff. But Stranger Things was like her real big breakthrough. It feels cool to be on like the the bottom floor, and everybody knows that they're in on the bottom floor. Oh yeah, she. I mean, she, she's going to be a fucking. She right star. now is like my favorite actor. <laughs> you you want to put. You want to make me stand a, a movie and be like, yes, I'm pulling for this character no matter who they're playing. My, like, Maya Hawk's character in this movie got jail time. Oh, yeah. And I was like, get him, Maya. <laughs> I was like, hey, do whatever you're going to do. And uh, the, her, like, she had, like a, she had a grand entrance in this movie, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think I noticed her... Until the car scene, that I think that's like the I think that might be like the first time she's in the movie. She's but she's one of the Manson family, so right. she's at the she's at the ranch or whatever. Okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong then, but I I, uh, I do remember being like in the car scene, being like, oh, that's oh, really let's cool. go, yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, yeah, I was excited that she was in it, especially because of the the Tarantino connection. It's very cool. And, you know, everyone stands Millie Bobby Brown so much, and we do, too. I mean, she's, yeah, she's, she's great. the best. She's going to take she, over the world. She's overhyped. Not overhyped, but she's gotten the hype. My hype, my mm-hmm. hawk has not had the hype yet. I feel that with Stranger Things, and I remember we went through this, you kind of have to, it's very much like the boy band effect of, like, who's your favorite? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, I like, I think that Justin and, and JC are the best. No, you oh you can't pick both of those. Obviously, everyone thinks that one of those two is the best. You've got to pick. We got to this. Uh, you said if you could hang out with anyone from Stranger Things, it would be Joe Curie. Yeah, and I was like, might be Randy. No, just kidding. I was like, oh, David Harbor all the way. And like the next couple of days, we were both kind of like thinking about it. Like, wait, do I want to trade? If I can only hang out with one of them, like Joe's more my age. Would Joe like me? Dave would put up with me. It's very much the boy band thing. And then he, I think you admitted that you came around on Joe Keery. You like I I I underrated Joe Keery. I underrated him. I still definitely though David Harbor all the way. I mean David Harbor seems like a fucking unbelievable guy and just like the best time. But so does Joe Keery. Yeah, but then <laughs> but right, but then you're you're now you're doing the you can't have right. But I'm I, again I would pick Joe Keery. 
Yeah. So we should... I think that I would have more in common with Joe Curie and you would have more in common with David Harbour. I think that could not be more correct. Yes. I think that's the most accurate thing <laughs> that's ever been said on the podcast. Me and David Harbour, it would be us sitting on a couch, beers cracked, and like... So... Sometimes you're put together and sometimes you're sloppy, huh? <laughs> yeah. Word. Me too. <laughs> Got any of those cigarettes? <laughs> that is exactly how that would go. Um, Who would you least want to hang out with of the Stranger Things kids? Gaten Ga- Ma- Matarazzo. Why? He uh, seems like a... Like a eh. He seems like a very sweet kid. Eh. Not my favorite. I've, I've since... I've since like... I'm out you're, on Gaten. You know who I'm out on? Who? I think you might know. I think I think I've 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 sent you a couple well. texts over <laughs> this. Yeah, you know what? You know what? <laughs> We're gonna break some news here. I actually don't like Will's character. No, I got no problem with that kid. What's the kid's name? Noah. Yeah. Uh, my. This is the awkward to voice these things because I know that Randy listens. And it's like I we're know. talking shit about his friends. children, his children, friends. But also, whenever we ask him like questions about strange things that we know he can't answer, he just doesn't speak, <laughs> as was the case with uh, that episode he was on. Randy earmuffs. Oh, I texted Jeff after that episode. Jeff was like, "Wow, they didn't let him talk at all." And I texted him, and I was like, "Jeff, I love you, you idiot." <laughs> he was not speaking. We asked him questions. He would not answer them because there were questions we shouldn't have asked. Yeah, for sure. And then we decided to leave the questions in and just move on to the next one. Now, nah, F- Finn, man, I worry a little about Finn. I don't know. I think Finn's a, Finn's a cool dude. I think Finn is uh, he's he's trending in the right direction. I think he's getting a little ahead of himself. Uh, maybe in the music sense. I mean, we did you watch this. his KEXP performance? No. I'm I'm trying to like I'm trying to like keep a b- total blind eye. Okay, he. Uh, I just I, the only my only music exposure to him is pop. Oh right, because he does stuff with them. Pop, pop videos, yeah. Uh, I mean, no. If 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 when I were his age, how old is he? Like fifteen, sixteen, whatever. Somewhere around there. So, I don't know if I was in a band at that age, but if they were like, hey, one of you is famous. Now we're going to sign your band. Hey, want to do a KEXP performance? I'd be like. Yo, this is so cool. This is awesome. But also, like that band that I was in was bad because we hadn't learned how to be <laughs> a band. A, a good at being in a band. I actually, a little inside baseball. You know how my band broke up? No. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We Yeah. It was a big thing. We were, uh, there was a show coming up. It was like uh, an outdoor concert. And we could play on it, and I felt that not all of us were that like we weren't really buckling down and really getting down to brass tacks and being as good as we could be. And they were like, "Oh, we're we're pretty good. I think we we can do this." And I was like, "No, we're not ready. We've got to get this good, and then we can play that show." And then they were like. Well, we're going to tell them that we're playing the show. And I was like, good luck playing it without me. And then like one second later, they were like, okay, yo, our drummer's brother sings and plays guitar, right? (laughs) Awesome. Yo, we just became a better band. This is so, we just got a gig and improved as a band in five seconds. But I went to, I went to the show to support them and they were like, what are you doing? You don't have to. (laughs) Dude, like this, you're not important to this band anymore. Maybe we'll get back together. Oh. The drummer of my band? Yeah. Who's he the drummer of the Fleet Foxes? He's the drummer of uh, Electric Six. Oh, nice. Yeah, pretty crazy. Nice. No, man. he's not the drummer. I thought about putting uh, the drummer of Fleet Foxes in that uh, cafeteria thing. <laughs> Should have done it. Uh, want to do one more movie or do you want to read something really fun? Oh, yeah. I'll do... Uh, I just want to finish my Once Upon a Time in Hollywood thoughts. I've only seen it once. I definitely want to see it again. For sure. Um, it's, I th- I would say in the middle of my, like, because Tar- everybody loves to fucking, oh, is it the best Tarantino movie? All They're, they want to do is rank Tarantino yeah, movies. That's all they want to do. Like, it's it, people go to see Tarantino movies not because they love Tarantino, they but because they want to. They want shame <laughs> and rank Tarantino <laughs> yeah. movies. Uh, it's in the middle of the pack for me. It, it is. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and I think that it's one of the best movies of the year so far. Mm. Um, but it's not one of the best Tarantino movies, um, or not. It's not towards the front. Here's where it's tough for me. 
I don't know which Tarantino movies I've seen. I've seen it's only like nine of them. Right, there's nine. I've seen. Um, in, I think I've only seen Inglorious Bastards. What? I don't think I've seen Reservoir Dogs. I've not seen Kill Bill. Kill what? Bill's the one with Maya Hawke's mom, right? Yes. <laughs> I like that we've already uh, pivoted to that's Maya Hawke's mom. Yo, I she's my she is seriously my favorite actor. Like I, I don't know who my who was my favorite actor before. Uh, it was Josh Tillman. But, uh, uh, bootleg bootleg Tom Hardy. Bootleg Tom Hardy. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who my favorite. No, uh, it's uh, Tom Hanks. Okay. Oh, by the way, you want a little uh, Mister Rogers aside? Sun- Saturday night, I came home quite overserved, and I stayed up for a little bit. I probably. I had another beer or something or something. I stayed up and I was in my living room and then I went to bed to uh, fall asleep quickly and I turned on the TV and then I couldn't find the remote after I turned on the TV and I was in bed, didn't know where the remote was. It was on PBS and I was like, you know what? I am very tired. I'm going to fall asleep with or without this TV on. So whatever. I'm just going to fall asleep. I then woke up at like 6 a.m. to the beginning of Mr. Rogers. Hell yeah. And it was seriously like nightmare shit. Because like my body was still drunk. I was like, why Why is my TV in my room, which generally is not on, on? And why is it Mr. Rogers? And I was like, you know what? I'm still very tired. I think I'm going to be able to fall asleep again. So I did. And I woke up like three or four times while Mr. Rogers shit was going on. <laughs> Nightmare stuff. <laughs> oh, that is a great update. I also just, uh, I love you saying I went to bed quickly. Just because like, it sounds yes. like you were in a rush to get to bed. Yes. Nobody is like in a rush to go to sleep. Do you know what I was saying? Yes. When you, I, you, yeah, you were just like, I was trying to get there quickly. Well, my my body was able to fall asleep very, very quickly. Right. I get that. Yes. But I, I, I just like the the vision of like running to bed oh, to yeah. fall asleep. <laughs> it's like your clock is... You've Lights got, out. You've got like... You're trying to like literally beat the clock. You've got three seconds to get into right. bed and fall it's asleep. It's lights out. <laughs> oh, they're going to be pissed. <laughs> That's why I laughed. Uh, yeah. So once upon a time in Hollywood, in the middle of my Tarantino thing right now, but I will say, I think that it, I, I have a... There, there's a chance that I like it more upon the second viewing because a lot of the times it happens with Tarantino movies. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm excited to see it again. And I really liked it. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes gave it... So I, I just looked this up, but I forgot. I think Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 85. Oh, man. And the audience so score was 70. What? I think those are both so low. I would bump it up to... 92. It should be. It should be like a ninety-five uh, aggregate score, like because that's aggregate. Is that uh, audience? Or no, that's t- like the critics. Tomato. Like that's uh, the, the tomato, tomato meter. meter. Yeah. Okay, I would say right. I would say ninety-two. I'm cool if you want to go a little higher. Audience score should be easily 85, 90, But I understand would people it's treat a higher bar. Tarantino movies differently. They're like it's all relative to Tarantino and like what kind of stunts is he pulling? But people fucking but like, just people, watch it and like but it. But people fucking pick and choose with that, which makes me so mad. We talk about this so many times. It's like if you're going into a, like a movie with The Rock, if you're going to like into Hobbs and Shaw or like right. fucking Rampage or something, you know that it's just a rock movie, right? It, it, and so like. To be like, oh, this movie kind of sucks, like 60%. It's like, well, what the fuck did you expect? Okay. And then when you're going into Tarantino, like, you can't just pick and choose with that shit and go into Tarantino and be like, if this isn't the greatest movie ever, it's a 75. Uh, I'm going to look up two movies that should that kind of illustrate what you're talking about. Um, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a 70 audience score, Rotten Tomatoes. Game Night is a 77 audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. And I liked Game Night a lot. I loved Game Night. But it's a stupid comedy movie. It's a funny stupid comedy movie. It's funny. It is the, it's But like Game that, Game Night the is house. the definition of like B minus that everyone was so excited about for in its B minusness. Right. Uh Booksmart was a 77 
audience score. I would say that Booksmart deserved like between a 75 and an 80. So, but like, is Booksmart better than Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? No. I would say unequivocally not. Right. Also, Booksmart's tomato meter is 97. Like, yeah, I liked the- Booksmart a lot, but I similarly to Game Night, where it's like, Yo, you guys are going crazy on this. Like, <laughs> yeah. we, we li- it, it was good. We liked it. Yeah, but the tomato meter just means that like almost every critic liked it. Not that they all liked it 97%. Oh, okay. So like, so 90 like per, 97% of critics liked it. it. A, yeah. A positive. Right. Which I think that's fine, but it's also like, how, how are that many critics shitting on this movie? Crazy Once Upon a Time me. in Hollywood. I, I don't get it. And like the 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 criticisms, I think are, are are so misplaced. My biggest criticism with this movie, or at least like the the criticism that I'm surprised it's not getting more, is Emil Hirsch is in this movie. Yeah, like a not a lot of people are talking about like Emil Hirsch. Just like he hasn't been in shit for like three th- or like big shit for like three or four years since he choked a female executive right. to the point of unconsciousness. And like especially in the in like the time of cancellation culture, for how sure. the fuck. That wasn't like a bigger story that Tarantino was just like, all right, come on down. And it's not even like a huge role. Uh, Bruce Lee's family, also not happy about this movie. Because, Shocker. Because Bruce Lee got his ass kicked, <laughs> kind of. They make Bruce Lee a an asshole yeah, yeah. <laughs> cartoon who gets his ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was it was real funny that they like decided to go there, though. You know like, what that else is a bold decision. You know what else is real funny? I don't know what's real funny, but I do know that Care Of is a subscription service that delivers vitamins and supplements customized to your specific health needs, and uh, you just have to take a short quiz and answer questions about your diet, lifestyle, fitness, and health goals, and Care Of puts together a personalized plan just for you. Care Of helps you get back into a healthy routine with summer approaching, well... With summer not approaching because we are deep into the heart of summer at this point, Milk, make health and wellness a priority again. And Care Of makes it easy for you to do that. It makes it easier for you to upgrade your health routine by giving you yourself support through, uh, through energy, better sleep, and maintaining stress or something else to help you feel your, at your healthiest. It's easy and convenient to, to use uh, care of. It can be really hard to know what, what vitamins or supplements to take or, or where to find them. But care of delivers the daily vitamins and supplements that you need all in customized pack to your door. Uh, and they give you recommendations to take what you really need. So depending on your personalized plan, you get the stuff that you need and it's sent right to your door. That's very cool. Very I could talk about this all day. <laughs> Please stop. Uh, experience the care of we difference. Could talk, we could spend all day on this. <laughs> Please experience the care of difference. They make sure that what you're putting into your body comes from the best sources backed by honest guidance the way, and, tra- and, and transparency all available you to you on their website. From the, it care comes of from the, what you're now putting in your offer, body comes from the best horses? <laughs> care of now offers protein powders available in individual packets for on-the-go or horse pills for on the go and tubs, all personalized to your fitness goals and They're dietary called stables. <laughs> for instance, uh, we love care of because we take it all the time and you just can't get enough. We of it. love it. We you talk just, about it all the time. We talk about it like 90% of the time. We, we will we'll, we'll like, spend a lot of time talking about care of. I'll tell you that. I don't know if you've noticed, but like most of our days are spent talking about care of whether we like it or not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh, that's our personal endorsement for for care of because <laughs> it's a uh, good personal endorsement. <laughs> yes, uh, it's it's a super fun and easy quiz to take, and uh, you'll have a good good time doing it. If you want to get in on care of and get a twenty five percent off your first order, go to care take care of dot com and enter promo code brunch. Again, that's twenty five percent off your first care of order by going to take care of dot com and entering promo code brunch. I personally in. Doors, all of that. Let's wrap up quickly with uh, a movie you said, hey, Dave, got to see it. You being Dave, what, we, we gave up that bit like yeah. 40 minutes ago. Uh, you said, hey, I saw this movie. Check it out. Talking about an alligator movie <laughs> called Crawl. And I saw it in the entire time I was trying to get to the twist of it, which was the twist is, why did Pete want me to see this movie? <laughs> Wait, no way. It, that movie was, was very good. It... 
It was very good for what it was, which right. is just a fucking alligator monster movie. Right, exactly. It was like a... Uh, I just didn't know what kind of movie it was supposed to be. And then halfway through it, I was like, all right, it's it's Rampage or it's like any one of those. It's just it's just a fucking like trapped in the house thriller and there are alligators here. Let's th- sit back and enjoy. That one had a huge... They got an 84 on Rotten Tomatoes and a 75 audience score. That's crazy. I yeah. mean, uh, it's... it's uh, a very interesting movie in that like it's very self-contained mm-hmm. and there are not many people in it and only one of these people i think i've ever seen before and that's barry pepper uh yes. who plays the the father uh it's a father and daughter trapped in a house uh during a hurricane and all these alligators come swarming in and i i just really enjoyed it it was like a cool thriller it was kind of gritty and uh, just a lot of fun, honestly. Uh, I got three notes on Crawl that I took, and there just like weren't very many notes to take in this movie. I took notes. They're somewhere on my phone, and they're just gonna die there. Okay. Uh, the the one that I had is that this uh, the the main actress yes. is I've never seen her in anything before. I don't know if she's been in anything, yeah. but it was like a pretty nice like. I don't know if I want to call it like a breakthrough performance, but pretty good. She looks like Emma Stone. She's bootleg Emma Stone. Oh, okay. Bootleg Emma Stone. I don't mind that. I did text you after the movie, and I was like, she was great in that. She was good. Uh, second note. And when you get good performances out of like, like a, a chaos movie, movie, you know, yeah. like, hey, you know what? That's a real actor. Yeah. Uh, it, my second note, though, is a criticism of her. Uh, not a great screamer for a monster movie. Ah. Uh, well, like, they got to scream a lot. There's always something that a person in any sort of like chaotic movie should have that doesn't like I, i'll go to uh maggie grace is that the actress in um in taken she's sure. the weirdest runner in the oh, world yes yeah yeah and it's like you're put if you're casting someone who's got to run a lot you gotta cast someone who can run <laughs> you would think that woman can't run. Did you see? Uh, did you see the the viral clip of the dude on Twitter that went this week? Uh, he plays a quarterback, like a star high school quarterback. No, just like the worst throwing form in the world. Oh god, it's so funny. Uh, yeah, so it's just a very small criticism that, mm-hmm. like, hey, not the best screamer in a situation where you're going to be screaming a lot. True. So uh, that was kind of glaring. And number three. Maybe the first monster movie that I have ever seen in which a dog is a very central part and does not die. Yeah. And I was very happy about that because I was just waiting the entire movie for the dog to die. Like the fe- dog is basically a red herring. I that felt that was a kind of cheap thing that, to keep you invested the whole movie. I mean, obviously, <laughs> like there's the constant threat of these characters are going to die. But none of us, It's it, there's, three, there's three characters. It's the girl, her father, and the dog. No one cares if the dad dies. And that's why I feel like the movie didn't make a huge mark on me. Like, I was mainly just scared of the alligators, and I know that's what it's trying to do. But I feel like it's trying to hold this over you that, hey, what if the dad dies? Like, because she's spending so much time not only trying to save herself, but primarily to save her dad. I don't think anybody watching that movie cared. If, like, the dad got gobbled up by an alligator in one second, we'd be like, cool, we like the main character and the dog more. <laughs> yeah. I'd say that that's a fair that's a fair thing. And like, uh, you, could, you could get over it. And also having the dog there though does keep your attention the whole time because you're like I don't this want This dog better I not don't, fucking die. I don't want anything to But also like this dog. I know that it's like a ridiculous movie, but also the dog surviving that movie is just completely unrealistic. There were fucking alligators everywhere. Was that the final one of your notes? Yeah. Okay, uh second row of your favorite concert and everybody else is standing up and you can't get up. Or, I'll say that again, second row of your favorite concert, and everybody else is standing up, and you have to stay seated, or a basement with alligators. Where are y'all sitting? Uh, not, I'm not doing alligators. No thanks. That first scenario was pretty bad, though. It's a pretty bad scenario, but I just cannot do alligators. Fuck that. Okay, no, how about this? Second row terrifying. of your favorite concert, and everybody else is standing up, and you can't get up, plus... There's an alligator somewhere <laughs> in the venue, and it's not a very big venue, so who knows if it's – maybe it's really close to you, or uh, a basement that has murky waters, and there's a more than 50% chance there's one alligator there. Uh, I'm still doing the concert. Well, yeah. don't answer. We'll wrap it up. Ne- we'll answer next time on Where Y'all Sitting. <laughs>